Okay? So, iba yung uh, materials na to. But it is similar to that one. So, we're talking about this so-called electronic structure. Okay? And uh, when we're talking about this electronic structure, the first thing that comes to our mind is yung tinatawag nating light. Okay? And the nature of light as we know it is usually that of what we call a wave. So, bago natin i-discuss yung dual nature, light is known to behave like a wave. Okay? So, a wave we could say is just a vibrating disturbance in which energy is transmitted. Okay? So, saan nyo ba ma-observe yung wave? So, let's say you are in a pan. Okay? Pag may pinato kayong uh, rock doon or pebble, so you will see, okay, na magpo-form ng wave. And if you're going to look at the side view of that, ganito yung itsura niya. Although, ang makikita natin is parang pag ganon, tapos magpo-form na ganon. But if you're going to make it like this, you form this thing. And usually, okay, you can characterize yung tinatawag natin wave. Okay? So, the characteristic of this uh, wave uh, can be through the length, yung tinatawag natin wavelength, which is just the distance between the identical points and successive wave. So kung meron tayo dito sa peak, we look at the distance at the next peak. So kung meron tayo dito sa tro, we're going to look at the distance. So it's just the same, we could say, point ng wave ang tinitina natin with respect to wavelength. Okay? Now, if we're going to look at the height, yung vertical distance from the midline of the wave to the peak or the draw, ang tawag natin dyan, amplitude. Okay? But amplitude does not characterize a wave. The one that characterizes a wave is the wavelength. Okay? And the other one that is known as what we call the frequency. Okay? So, the relationship of the wavelength and the frequency, we could say, is inversely proportional. Because when we're talking about frequency, that's the number of waves that pass through a certain point in time. Okay, usually seconds. Kaya ang unit na inano natin dyan per second. Or yung tinatawag natin hertz. So, when I say inversely proportional, so as you could see here, you have a longer wave compared to the one here. So the number of frequencies is less. Because if you're going to count at a certain point in time, ilan lang yun? One, two, three, four frequency. Okay? But if the wavelength is shorter, the frequency is higher. So in your relationship, no. The law. Okay? So we could say if we have what we call this one, okay, and you multiply it with this one, ano makukuha nyo? Anyone? Wavelet of frequency is equals to what? You can use your voice, okay? So you have the so-called speed of light. And speed of light is what? One second. Three, three multiplied. Three hundred. Three multiplied to ten raised to sixteen four yata. Okay, so it's three point zero times ten to the eight meters per second. Okay, now, if we're going to look at this, okay, we could say that the material that we have here is just anything that is uh, the one that has made like property. And we could say, we can include this as the so-called 
electromagnetic radiation. Okay. And James Maxwell proposed that when we're talking about visible lights, it's made out of these so-called electromagnetic waves. Now you may ask why electromagnetic waves? Because it has both the electric component and the magnetic component. So one we could say is like this, and the other one is like this. But they go in the same direction. And if we're going to look at this electromagnetic radiation, this is just the emission and transmission of energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. Okay, at dito ko pwede i-ano yung value ng speed of light in vacuum. Okay, so all uh, we could say electromagnetic radiation, the speed of light is just the product of the wavelength and frequency. Now you may ask, what is this electromagnetic Radiation. So it's it's a, it's made up of different regions, okay. And if you're going to look at this, they have applications in our everyday life. The main reason why we see the different colors around us, okay, we can talk nothing rainbow color is because of the small visible region. It's so small, okay. Now, if you're going to look at this one, so we could say this is what? Going to longer wavelength. And this one is going to shorter oops, wavelength. So from here, we could say, which color has the longest wavelength? So you apply nyo yung tinatawag nating Roy G B. Right? Is this new to you? So yung blue has a shorter wavelength compared to the red. Now in terms of frequency, we could say this one has higher frequency Ito naman, lower frequency. Now, we can relate also the energy here. So, saan marirelate yung energy? I can ask the question. Between blue flame and yellow flame, which is hotter or which is warmer? Blue flame. Okay. Have you watched Game of Thrones? Kung bat, uh, kung nakakaintindi na kayo, kung pwede na kayo manood doon sa series na yun. So there, there's two dragons that fought at the end. Okay. The, the normal one which emits a yellow flame and the one that was resurrected by the Ice King that emits a blue flame. Okay. So between the two, we could say must high energy yung blue flame. We always had cool blue, right? But it's not really uh, 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 true. It's a misnomer. And the way that you, you, you could look at this, uh, what we call energy. So we could say for, for this one, the energy here is lower. The energy here is higher in this region. Now, what are the applications that we have? At longer wavelength, meron tayong infrared, yung microwave, saka yung radio wave. They're not highly energetic, but they can affect uh, 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 other stuff. Okay? Uh, I don't know uh, if you heard reports that some residents who live near uh, satellite feed, okay, they usually have some health problems. But in terms of energy, they're not really high compared to this one. What's one effect of ultraviolet? Yung tinatawag nating tan or sunburn. Okay? That's the reason why you don't look directly in the sunlight. Okay? Unless your president Trump is dumb enough to look 
uh, in the sunlight during eclipse. Okay. And then, if you're going to talk about other uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation uh, at higher energy, shorter wave, like you have the X rays. Okay. That's the reason why, as much as possible, once a year for you to X ray, because you don't want to express to, to be exposed in a high uh, radiation. And then you can also have these gamma rays. So if you're exposed to that, you're not going to become incredible hope. You die. It's as simple as that. And if you're going to go further there, you have the so-called cosmic rays. And if you're exposed to that, you also die. You don't become the fantastic four. Okay, those stuff are just science fiction. So it is the magnetic electromagnetic radiation. So there's a lot of questions that can be asked here. Okay. So this is uh, very important in the knowledge on the uh, electronic structure. Okay. And we can have some calculation here, but the, the quiz that we have today, wala pang calculation. Ano yung kumun na kayo? Mga true or false question na. Like three questions in five minutes na sasagutin ninyo. Okay. So I'm just going to give you some calculation here, maybe one calculation, and then you can work out the one doon sa module, tsaka doon sa lecture ko. And as you could see, this is different from the lecture material that I have. Parang ginagawa ko na, kompletos rekados tayo to prepare you to the exam. Okay? So we can have here, a, a, a proton has a frequency of 6.0 times 10 to the 4 hertz. So hertz is equals to what? One per second, or genitong symbol na to. Now you are to ask to convert this frequency into wavelength. So does this frequency fall in the visible region? So if you're going to look at the visible region, so that's this is small region here, from 400 to 700 nanometer. Okay. So if we're going to solve this, so we have this thing. So, ano alam natin? We know C. So, we are asked to get this one. So, it's just like this. So, you have 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 6.0 times 10 to the 4 per second. Ano yung makukuha nyo? Five times ten is to the So you have five times ten. Times ten to the what? Times ten to the what? Raise eleven. So you have three exponent uh, eight divided by six exponent four. So five times one, two, three. Kamaba. I think I have the thing here just to make sure. Now, this is in millimeter. So you have to convert it to nanometer. So if you're going to do that, so for every one meter, you have one times 10 to the nine nanometer. So you multiply it by one exponent nine. So you have five times 10 to the negative, to the 12. So we could say based on this, okay, it's not in the visible region. So if you're going to look at this one, the electromagnetic spectrum, so doon siya sa region near the microwave or the radio wave. So th th those are the some of the questions that may come out. So maybe sa next quiz natin, bigyan na natin ng calculation. Okay? Now, all the while, ang alam nila, yung light, okay, ay talagang ano, wave in nature. Okay? And what happened during that time, okay, 
yung common na atomic theory, what do you think is the common atomic theory during that time? If we're going to have some sort of a history no atomic theory, I can use uh thing here. So, kailan nag -ano yung concept ng atom? Anyone? Is it during the Greeks, right? Sino yung natatandaan yung ano dyan? Involved. Aristotle po. Is it Aristotle? It's the guy by the name? Democ Democritus. Although in some book it says there's, a, there's another one like Lucifer is like a master and apprentice para sa Star Wars. But the problem with uh, Democritus, he's not as popular as Aristotle. Okay, so noong pa man uso na, okay, kahit bobo, basta sikat, pinapakinggan nila. Okay, so what did Democritus said? That if you're going to cut any materials, it will come the time that it will be indivisible. At doon, na ano yung word na atomos, which means indivisible. But during the time, there's no scientific evidence. It's all speculation. Okay? But unfortunately, kumasikat si Aristotle, so na na nangibabaw yung ano niya, yung uh, element is made up of four materials. Okay? Kung nanood kayo ng avatar, yun yung apat na ano dyan, yung air, uh, fire, uh, ano yun, yung banda, earth, wind, and fire, kasa, kasama dito. <laughs> At saka yung ano yung isa? Land? Okay? So yung any material is a mixture of that. So kapag alam yung Captain Planet, yun yung element nila para mag-construct. And that's the one. But, around 1800, an English school teacher by the name of John Dalton went back doon sa concept na pre-nopos ni Democritus at inano niya yung atom. Okay? Sabi niya, atom is what the common element made up of. And he put some postulates of it. Some of them are already discarded. Okay? And then after Dalton, sino yung kasunod? Si Thompson, di ba? Ito naman, yung gamit yung I, 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 I don't know. You know an old TV na ano yung sa yung mataba sa, sa, sa likod? I don't know if you have CRT seen that. Po. That's an old television set. So, he used this cathode ray tube. Okay? At nakita niya na all of these cathode rays or canal rays is made up of negative. Uh, what we call the uh, charge. So sabi niya, yung atom, this is made up obviously uh, negative. And he assumed that there are positive particles on it. So meron siyang tinatawag na plum pudding model. Okay? So meron kang uh, pudding, tapos yung mga resins doon, yun yung tinatawag natin negative charge, which we call electron. And this was discarded by one of his students, which is Rutherford. Okay? So, ano yung experiment na ginawa ni Rutherford? Marami pang ano doon, uh, kinarakterize nila yung electron, yung the Millikan oil experiment. Okay? But Rutherford, he did this so-called alpha scattering and it was only useful because of X-ray. And he found out that Thomson's model is not the right model. Because he found out, okay, kapag true yun, magdi-deflect Okay? Yung alpha rays niya, because alpha rays made up of positive. But, what happened is, most of them, 98, 99 to, 98 to 99% just passed through. Okay? And what we found out there is, yung may massive lang na positive charge doon sa gitna. And that's where you have the so-called nuclear model. So, yun yung ano yung time na yun. Okay? So, ano problema dito sa nuclear model. So if you're going to look at the nuclear model that, 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 that you have, 
during that time, okay, if we follow the so-called classical physics during that time, yung Rutherford atom na yun, unstable. I think I'm just going to use the yung PowerPoint para at least maganda yung. So, unstable yung uh, Rutherford atom pag pinapalo natin yung classical physics. Because what will happen, your electron, okay, in circular or electrical orbits around the nucleus, it must emit radiation. And when it emit radiation, malulus yung kanyang energy at spiral in the nucleus. But the problem is, it doesn't happen. Okay? So, so yun yung ano doon. So, they, they need an explanation why in spite okay, of the behavior of this what we call uh, atom, the nuclear model, hindi siya ma-explain yung tinatawag natin classical physics. Ano ba yung classical physics? Anyone? Physics based on who? Sino na propose ng classical physics? Okay, the Newtonian physics. So pag in-apply yung uh, classical physics doon sa uh, Rutherford atom, ay ah, ito na iinis ako 10 minutes na naman. Akala ko ligtas na tayo eh. Okay? So the usual, pag kinikaw tayo, balik ulit tayo. Okay? So yung classical physics, pag, pag, pag in-apply mo si at sa, doon sa atom, hindi niya ma-explain Bakit instable yung behavior ng material? So, bago ma-explain yun, okay, merong phenomena na na-observe nila na hindi rin nila ma-explain using classical physics. At ito nga yung unang sinulog ni Max Planck. Okay, ito yung tinatawag nating black body radiation. Okay? So, ang ginawa ni Max Planck when solids are heated, they emit electromagnetic radiation over a wide range of wavelengths. And he found out that some of the radiant energy emitted by an object at a certain temperature depends on its wavelength. Hindi siya yung parang direct. So at a certain, what we call uh, temperature, nag-ano nag, lang siya at a certain wavelength. Okay? So ito yung tinatawag natin black body radiation. And the way Planck's explained it is, he described the energy not as continuous but as a discrete unit. So from the wave nature, dito na pumasok yung particle nature. Okay? So ang ano niya dito, yung energy in the form of light, it's emitted of absorbed in discrete units. And during that time, it was revolutionary. And it helped explain the behavior of the atom. So pagpasok niya, nag-develop siya ng panibagong equation. Okay? So he said, the energy of a material depends on a number that he said for times the frequency. At yung H na yun, yun yung tinawag na flat constant. Okay? It's 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. Okay? Now, the classical physics cannot explain the behavior of this black body radiation. So classical physics, uh, the object can acquire or lose any amount of energy no matter how small it is. But in Planck, okay, there is always some sort of a lower limit. Pag namit mo yung limit, okay, ma-emit ma 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 na yung energy. Okay? Compared to that one. At ang tawag niya dun ay yung quantum. And then, this explanation was also used by Einstein to solve the so-called photoelectric effect. Okay? You know Einstein? What's the Nobel Prize of Einstein? Is it for the theory of relativity? Saan na nalo ng Nobel Prize si Einstein? Anyone? Doon ba siya nanalo doon sa E equals to MC squared? The answer is no. He won the Nobel Prize because of the photoelectric effect. Okay? So what he did is he explained yung tinatawag nating photoelectric effect. So this is a phenomenon 
in which the electrons are ejected from the surface of a metal that is exposed okay, to light with at least a minimum frequency. So dito, inadapt niya yung concept ni Max Planck. So parang nagiging dual nature na ngayon yung light. So sabi niya, may minimum amount of energy okay, na kung saan ma-emit -e yung electron sa metal surface. So ang tawag niya dito yung photon, the particle of light. And if you're going to look at this thing, okay, so inano niya dun yung Hb which is equals to energy. So the kinetic energy plus the W, w is the work function that you have. So you could see that, that the energy is a frequency of or a multiple of a frequency. So what Max Planck did is a revolutionary during that time to, to, to the point that Halos lahat ng research institutes so Germany at present has a name Max Planck Institute. Okay? So ang, ang ano naman dito is yung ano nila na yung light as an energy can also have a particle nature. Okay? And they adapt this to solve problems. So, meron kayong E equals to HB. And you know, C is equals to B times uh, wavelength, right? So, pag ni-replace mo yun doon, if you're going to replace this, so this is what C over wavelength. So, E is just equals to H times C over the wavelength. So you can relate the energy with respect to the wavelength. Okay? So if we're going to solve this before tayo ma 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 kick out, let's try to solve this. So when copper is emitted by a high electrons, X, uh, uh, when copper is bombarded with high ele energy electrons, X-ray are emitted. So calculate the energy in joules associated with the photon if the wavelength of the X-ray is 0.154. So we can just use okay, the value here. And I think I, I put something here. <laughs> so it's just the same as that. Pareho lang yan doon. So we know the plug constant, we know the speed of light, and then we divide all of them with the equivalent of 0 0.154 nanometer two meter. So you have what? One meter, one times 10 to the nine nanometer, and you have that negative value that you have here. And this is just around, if you cancel all the units, ang matitira a unit ng energy. So question. Okay, or about life. Tanong. Eh tanong. Tas, may tanong. Yes, Franklin. Hmm. No, wala. Hello po. Audible po ako. Okay, ngayon lang. Um, sir, ano po yung standard SI unit po na gagamitin po natin sa wavelength? Meter po or nanometer? Kasi it kanina depends. Po, example, I... Okay po. If you're talking about visible region, you have to use nanometer. Pero pag hindi specified, you can use meter. Kasi yung, yung uh, visible region is in the nano, nanometer, uh, what we call region, or yung unit niya. So makikick out tayo, and then we will continue with the bore. Okay? So before I, uh, what we call, uh, lahat ba kayo nasa chat group na? Sa group chat sa FB. Everyone there? Tapos lahat ba kayo may access na sa tawag dito canvas 
Ano bang pangalan yung wala? Malalad ata eh. Is uh, Malataga. Nandito ba si ano? So, yung ibang wala sa group chat, uh, paano ba? Ah, Nag-aano na kami dun eh. And I also posted the link for the recorded video doon sa group chat. So, PM me doon sa thing. Okay? So, I'm just waiting for us to be kicked out. And everybody uh, accomplish yung statement tsaka yung correquisite. Tinatanong na kasi sa akin eh. So, um, ano daw sa correct is it, you're taking 18 and at the same time, you should be taking 18.1. So, kung wala kayong 18.1, may problema tayo. Okay? And let me know kung ganun yung situation nyo. Okay? Sir? Yep. Pwede po bang humabal ako din sa agreement? Kasi as of now, naghahanap pa po ako ng lab component for Chem 18. So you have to do it as soon as possible. Okay, possible. Thank you. 